However, this morning, before we go to our next uh, study, I would like us to recap what we have gone through since we began up to today and see if the experience of David can create some confidence in us or possibly will strengthen our confidence in us and see where we stand today. On the first day, we saw God being introduced by David as a shepherd, whereas David introduces himself as a sheep, where he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You remember we said that David was painting a picture drawing from his experience as a shepherd. And he realized that this picture he is painting of the Lord God, of him being a shepherd and David being a sheep, in his experience as a shepherd boy, he saw it is the best way to show the world how much God, how much he, God, has done for the human race and for David in particular. Because as a shepherd boy, he knows that the shepherd is everything to the sheep. He knew that the shepherd is the defender, protector, healer, provider, and leader, name all that is needed by the sheep, the shepherd will provide. And he is also painting a picture that whatever the human race needs, it can only be found in God. If and only if the sheep obediently follow the shepherd. And David is trying to paint a picture that the law of the sheep is to follow the shepherd obediently. Definitely the traits of the sheep are well known that the sheep is humble and meek. But at the same time, it is easy for the sheep to go astray. And therefore there is a need for a leadership from the, uh, from the shepherd. And that's the Lord God. Definitely, you know how weak and feeble we are. And therefore, we need to have a shepherd to guide us, to lead us, to protect us, to defend us. We need a shepherd to feed us. We need a shepherd to take care of us and to share with us the love. And David, after agreeing that the Lord God is a shepherd, and he was the sheep. Just like now we are coming to the realization that we are the sheep and the Lord God is the shepherd. Therefore, in the presence of a mighty and great shepherd like God, we don't need anything because all our needs are provided for. And hence, the need to be in the presence of God all the time because he is our shepherd. We saw that he make us lie in the green grass. He leads us beside the still waters and we discovered that the Lord God as a shepherd, his guidance, his protection, his restoration, his salvation, his redemption is found in scripture, and therefore as members of the fold, as members of the Christian community, as members of the fold in which the Lord God is a shepherd, we need to study scripture every day, every time, every minute, and every second. And we need to rely on scripture so that we can overcome temptation, and God sent us an example in the person called Jesus Christ. 
because Jesus Christ used scripture to fend off the adversary, and that's the devil. That's why he quoted from Deuteronomy that man shall not live by food alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We also discovered that when he talks about leading us beside the quiet water, water represents the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a humble with that still voice. He does not force himself on you. He convicts you of your sin. And if you come to the realization of your sin, you will be refreshed. Verse 3 says, he refreshes my soul. You will be refreshed. In other versions, it says, he restores my soul. In other words, it's only God and only God who can restore you to your original status of perfection like the Father in heaven is perfect. And he, God, does it through the Holy Spirit. And he, God, also performs the function of restoration and refreshment through his son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And he guides me and you along the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It is God who leads us on the path of righteousness through scripture, through his Holy Spirit and his son, Jesus Christ. And he guides us on that path through he, these three uh, persons, including scripture, I'm calling scripture also a person, because he does it to honor his name. God's name is at stake if the human race is not saved. God's name is at stake if he does not guide and lead and protect and defend and restore the human race. Because he has gone through a lot and he has used a lot of mightiness. He has led us with a iron hand, guiding us away from the path of the evil, protecting us from the predator, the devil. And therefore, his name is at stake. He has made a reputation that he needs to protect. Please go walk with me through the Bible in a few statements. Because he created heaven and earth out of love. But along the way, we fell off the wagon by disobeying him. And we, our first parents ate of the fruit of the tree of knowing good and evil. But he comes in and he promises that he'll come to our rescue. Then along the way, he brings Noah. Noah, as the only human who was there, he wanted to start a human race that was God-fearing. Along the way, he comes to Abraham. Abraham starts a new family of uh, people of God. Along the way, he comes to the Exodus, where he takes the children of Israel from captivity, bringing them to the promised land. You saw all that episode, what happened along the way. Then he starts the nation of Israel. He raises up new kings, the greatest king, David, who has written this psalm. Then when we go through that, David has been promised that his kingdom will be forever and ever. And that was fulfilled in the person called Jesus Christ because he's the son of David, the lion of Judah. And when he comes, he performs all righteousness for our sake. And he dies on the cross for our sake. And then he starts a movement, a church, which is called the Christian church, because the word Christian comes from the word Christ, meaning those who are saved by the Lamb of God. And all that he has done, his name is at stake if we waver. And therefore, as Children of God, we need also to protect his name by following God 
in his footsteps, patiently, humbly, meekly, and obediently. Obedient to the word of God is the only way we can support God in protecting his reputation. And when he returns his kingdom the second time, we can be counted among those that will go to heaven and his reputation will be strong. Verse 4 says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Definitely. Looking at, our, at, at uh, David's experience, as he lived his life, walking side by side with the Lord, he went through dark valleys. Saul wanted to kill him. He was tempted with sin that would have killed him. His family was disorganized. There was a lot of evil in his family. You remember Amnon? Do you remember Absalom? Do you remember this other man who was fighting with Solomon to, to, to take over the kingdom? Then you look at how he has guided the human race from evil to righteousness what he did through Jesus Christ. It was a dark valley. But because he's a mighty God, we need not to fear anything. When we look at our physical life, sometimes we question the presence of God. But for sure, God is always there with us. It would have been worse. It would have been worse. This reminds me of a story that I've had since childhood of a man who met God and they were reviewing his life. As they reviewed his life, he realized that when things were moving well, there were two sets of footprints, which meant that he and the Lord were walking side by side. But when trouble came around, there was only one set. And the man asks God, why is it that when there is a trouble, there is only one footprint set? Could it be that you could have so forsaken me in the times of trouble? And then Jesus looked at him and smiled and said, my son, please, those, that set of footprints is mine. Why? Because in the times of trouble, I carry you on my shoulder so that I face the troubles with you on my shoulder so that I can lead you through these turbulent times. That's why more David is also saying that I will fear no evil because the Lord is with me. I assume David knew that in the times of trouble, the Lord God carries him on his shoulder. Therefore, he will not fear no evil because the Lord God is with him all the days of his life. Definitely in the Bible, David is saying, you are with me all the days of my life. Jesus re-echoes this verse in Matthew chapter 28, the last verses from 19 to 20. And he says, Lord, I am with you till the end of time. He re-echoes it in the book of Mark, and he says, when you go through waters, they will not swallow you. When you go through fire, it will not burn you. When you are beaten by vipers, poisonous, dangerous animals, you will not die of the poison. When you eat the poison, you will not die, because I am with you. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, this morning, that the Lord is with us. Whatever troubles we are going through, you know the world is very turbulent, but the Lord is with you. Have that comfort that the Lord is with you and the Lord is with me. And he continues to say, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Definitely the rod and staff is a tool for the shepherd. We say the rod is for protection and defense, whereas the staff is to guide the sheep. When they fall into the pit, the shepherd uses the staff to pull it up. 
when they um he meets a dangerous animal he uses the rod to fight off the dangerous animal and therefore god is our defender in whatever circumstance whatever enemies you have the lord is there to defend you just like he defended david all the days of his life the lord wants you to have confidence in him so that he gets the energy to defend you and because of the rod and staff us knowing that the lord is defending us us the knowing that the lord is protecting us us knowing that the lord is guiding us we have that comfort that we are in safe hands under the careful watch and protection of a mighty god the alpha and the omega who is leading us through the paths of righteousness so that we can inherit the kingdom of god in verse 5 we saw celebration celebration where the lord prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies here the psalmist switches from a shepherd and a sheep to a host and a guest we are god's guests he is our host and he prepares a table before us and in the presence of our enemies sometimes there are people who are fighting you here and there but always the lord comes through with you and he blesses you and you sit in the presence of your enemies and they watch you envious and they cannot harm you anymore and that will happen when he returns his kingdom god is going to take us to the heavenly places and we shall rule with him and we shall sit on his right hand and on his throne and the devil will watch and he will not do anything in revelation he says he is a throne in the pit for a thousand years he is left alone on this world wandering around looking around to see who he would tempt but he won't be able to see anybody but he will know that some of the individuals he used to tempt have overcome and they are in heaven and therefore the lord will have prepared us a table in the heavenly places and we shall be supping with him in the heavenly places therefore brothers let's have the confidence in the lord for he is preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemy the devil he continues to anoint my head with oil my cup overflows this anointment is a sign of royalty this anointment is a customary practice by the hebrew people for generosity and welcoming a guest into their home i gave a reference from the from the the the, the beg your pardon from the new testament in luke chapter 17 where we saw that jesus visited the house of simon simon when he hosted the lord he failed to give water to wash the feet of the lord he failed to also anoint the head of the lord but then this woman uh, who is mentioned in john uh, called mary she comes and anoints the lord with a precious oil she also washes the feet of the lord with her tears and in this case jesus as our host in the heavenly places he is going to wash our feet he is going to anoint us with oil as he hosts us to a feast of victory a feast of triumph i want to to tell you brothers and sisters in the book of luke chapter 7 not 17 i beg your pardon we see this image which is also painted in the book of psalms and which will be fulfilled in the heavenly places if we put our confidence in the lord and follow in his footsteps 
and study the word of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And then we walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We shall surely become triumphant and victorious. I believe I will be with you tomorrow. And I will conclude this psalm in verse 6, which says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. My prayer is that you stick to the confidence in the Lord, because the Lord God is your guide. He is your leader. He is your comforter. He is your restorer. He is your healer. He is your everything. And we ought to join in David in, in pronouncing and proclaiming this psalm that the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. And at the end of the day, the name of the Lord will be glorified. The name of the Lord will be exalted. The name of the Lord will be praised. And the name of the Lord will be put higher and higher than ever. And people will look at you and they will say, watch, that is a son of God. Watch, that is a child of God. He has been blessed because his cup or her cup is overflowing with blessings. Thank you for listening to me. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning devotion. Now, as we come into your Sabbath, as we prepare to go and worship you and praise you and exalt you, we pray that your blessings that have always been with us will continue to abide with us now and forevermore. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.